So you want to be a quant, whether it's optimizing trading strategies, building risk models or pricing complex financial instruments, quant roles are where math, coding and finance all collide and they're some of the most competitive roles out there. But don't worry, I've been there and I'm here to help you out. In this video, I'll break down exactly how to land a quant internship or a graduate role. We are going to cover how to pick the right path for you to prep effectively and just ace those interviews. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what steps to take to ensure you have the right toolkit and information to get that role that you want. So if you are ready to optimize your career trajectory, pun definitely intended, let's dive right in. First up, let's figure out which flavor of quant you want to be. Not all quants are cut from the same cloth. You've got developers, you've got analysts, and you've got researchers. To prepare effectively, you firstly need to figure out what roles fit your skills and interests best, because you need to tailor your CV and your prep accordingly. Quant developers are the techies of the quant world. You'll be coding tools and systems for the other quants to use, like, you know, a wizard crafting potions for their party. So if you love coding and spend your weekends debugging Python scripts for fun, or maybe not for fun, but definitely out of sheer determination, this is probably your lane. In all seriousness though, quant devs focus on building and maintaining the systems that drive these financial models. This is a highly technical role requiring very strong programming skills. So it's languages like Python, C++ and Java that are the most common. So for example, if you enjoy coding and you love solving optimization problems, this might be your path. It is also one of the most fast-paced roles available in the industry, so you can work on a large range of different projects, ideas, and different tools in a quite short time span. It is also probably the most cooperative role that you have in this industry, which can be a benefit to some people. You know, it's all about avoiding the loneliness of just staring at research papers all day. Quant analysts dive headfirst into data to find insights and to drive decisions. If you've ever gotten really excited about some very juicy Excel pivot table or spend too long debating the best data visualization tool, you might be an analyst in the making. Your job is essentially to figure out the why behind the numbers. You need to think Sherlock Holmes, but instead of a magnifying glass, you've got a Bloomberg terminal. Quants who lean towards analysis use data to understand trends and make predictions. So we're talking about roles in sort of the risk management and pricing models areas. So yeah, this is essentially the perfect path for you if you enjoy digging very deeply into data sets and presenting insights to drive decisions within the company. I think that this role is the one that also involves the least amount of coding. So if you really, really hate that, if that's really not your cup of tea, but you still want to perform useful analysis in the financial industry, this might just be the perfect option for you. And finally, quant researchers are the mathematicians of the finance world. They essentially create the models that developers and analysts use, often diving into areas like stochastic calculus and machine learning. If you're passionate about pure maths and academic style problem solving, this is definitely the role for you. You definitely also need to have a strong weight for this one. You won't be given too much guidance at the start and you'll need to experiment a lot before finding something that can actually generate your company money. And when I say that you need to have patience i do mean it because this could literally take years but the rewards do make it worth it i think the one aspect that people don't really realize before joining is that you need to know how to code you, you will code a lot if you're a quant researcher so there's definitely one aspect that you need to take into consideration it is also quite a lonely job you will have days when you are just stuck staring at your computer screen trying to code up a crazy predictor or reading financial news up to the third page of google to really get at market sentiment so yeah ask yourself what do i enjoy most is it coding is it maths is it data analysis Figuring this out early on in the process will guide your preparation and help you target the right companies in the right role. Alright, here's where the real grind begins. Preparation. Getting into a quant role is like training for a marathon, except instead of running, you're solving integrals, you're debugging code, and you're trying not to cry over optimization problems. 
There are four areas they need to master, which are math, coding, machine learning, and finance. Math is definitely the foundation of all of the quant roles. You'll need to be comfortable with topics like probability, statistics, linear algebra, and optimization. For instance, you might be asked in an interview to calculate the expected value of a very complex financial scenario or to explain the intuition behind eigenvectors and matrices. Normally, the problems will be presented to you in a game or a puzzle setting, so you need to get familiar with that so it doesn't startle you when it's the first time you hear it. There are, of course, several resources that you can use for this, but first you need to master the basics. And one way to improve on your maths and probability foundations is through structured resources like Brilliant, who are very, very kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant's interactive lessons on probability and statistics were definitely a game changer for me when I was solidifying these concepts for interviews in a practical way. Now seriously, Brilliant's probability fundamentals course is an absolute chef's kiss. It's like probability explained not just with numbers, but with puzzles and with real world scenarios that actually stick. And it's not just about learning, it's also about understanding. Their approach is completely hands-on. So instead of passively watching videos, you're actively solving problems, you're experimenting, you're making mistakes, which, let's face it, is indeed the best way to learn. And they've got so many courses across math, computer science and data analysis. Whether you're preparing for a quant interview, you're brushing up on core skills, or you're just curious about how math runs the world, literally, Brilliant makes it engaging and, dare I say, fun. So yeah, definitely do check out the link that I have for you guys down in the description below to start learning with Brilliant for free for 30 days, and you also will get a 20% off an annual premium subscription with my link. Now, once the foundation has been established, we want to practice on interview-style questions. I would highly recommend a website that's called Quant Guide. It offers hundreds of problems that you can solve and see full solutions for them as well to check your understanding. I also recommend that you treat a practical guide to quantitative finance interviews like your best friend. This is probably the most essential book that you need to master to make sure you can solve interview questions. It consists of a couple hundred solved real interview questions that range from brain teasers, calculus, linear algebra, probability, stochastic processes, finance, and programming. It can definitely feel a bit daunting at first, especially because it's the sort of style of problems that you don't expect, but you'll probably end up thinking that all of these problems are actually quite fun. But yeah, it definitely does take a lot of time to truly master them, but you'll find that there are a lot of patterns that repeat themselves, so with enough practice you will be able to actually master them, but do give yourself enough time before you start interviewing to actually prepare accordingly. As I've said before, coding is non-negotiable. Most quant roles these days require very strong programming skills, especially in Python, C++ and Java. Hello world won't cut it. You need to know data structures and algorithms pretty much inside out. For example, you should know how to implement a binary search or to optimize sorting algorithms. You might be asked to write a function that finds like arbitrage opportunities in a graph of currency exchange rates, for example. They'll explain what all of these concepts mean though, so you don't need to know any of these in advance, so just don't panic. Practice thinking out loud for sure and explaining your logic clearly. This is the absolute key when it comes to coding interviews. I would suggest that probably the best resource that you can use is LeetCode. You need to start with LeetCode easy problems if you're new and medium if you're feeling spicy. And remember, efficiency also matters. So if your code takes like 20 minutes to run, there's definitely a no-go. You need to think of your interviewer as a compiler, you know, strict, unyielding, and definitely not impressed by spaghetti code. I would say to find an online resource that tells you all of the data structures and algorithms that you need to master, and to make sure that you have covered at least 10 questions from lead code in each of these areas. Now, machine learning isn't technically mandatory, but it's like adding guac to your burrito, you know. It makes everything better. For example, understanding concepts like regression models or neural networks can definitely set you apart from the crowd. If you're new to machine learning, you need to start with the basics. I would definitely suggest that you take a course like machine learning from A to Z on Udemy, or you just play around with some Kaggle datasets to build small projects. This will not only improve your understanding, but it will also give you some practical experience that you can talk about in your Hey Jai interview. For example, you can build a model predicting stock prices or to classify cat photos for fun because, you know, a, li a little bit of variety here and there doesn't hurt. And finally, finance. You definitely do not need to be a finance expert. You don't even need to know any of the financial concepts from beforehand because they will train you on the job, but you do need to show genuine interest in the field. 
And by that, I mean simply read some financial news, go on to Bloomberg or Financial Times and maybe watch some YouTube videos explaining some of the financial stuff. Also, understanding basic concepts like just market trends and derivatives can help you make a stronger case during interviews. For instance, you could mention how a recent market event that's happening in the world sparked your curiosity about risk modeling. As I've said, and I'm going to reiterate, no knowledge is actually expected from you, but do make sure that you show the interviewers that you actually care. Okay, let's talk interviews. There are three main stages, HEJA, online assessment and technical interviews. It's all like a video game and each level gets progressively harder. The HEJA interview is your chance to show enthusiasm and prove that you're not a robot, unless you're applying for a robotics one role, in which case you need to embrace it. You need to prepare some answers to questions like, why do you want to be a quant? And pro tip, for the money is not the vibe. It's definitely not the vibe. Even if you're thinking that, don't say it. Be prepared to answer questions like why do you want to work here, uh, what sparked your interest in this company and what drives your curiosity. I would advise that you do your research about each company individually and you have something like a Word document for each of them where you type your answers to some possible questions. It is good practice and writing also enhances your memory so you'll find that after you wrote this document you will actually know what to say and your logic and your words are gonna flow so much easier. Next is the online assessment. These are time tests that cover coding, maths and sometimes logic puzzles. For example, you might need to solve a probability problem like a rolling dice type thing or a lead code style question. So yeah, as I mentioned before, make sure to practice with tools like QuantGuide and lead code to simulate the pressure of working under time constraints. Some companies want your arithmetic to be really strong as well, so they might give you some rapid maths to do. It's definitely not my favorite thing, but it's definitely a useful skill to have in real life. So yeah, there is that. And then the boss level, the technical interviews. These are intense coding and math sessions where you'll be grilled on algorithms, problem solving, and whether you can hold it together under pressure. The key is definitely to stay calm, to explain your thought process very clearly, to talk out loud, and to always double check for edge cases. And yeah, here are a few quick tips for interviews. First, you need to be confident. Even if you're not 100% sure about your reasoning, your answer, you need to be able to hold your opinion and to argue for it. Of course, respectfully. Second, speed is definitely important, but so is accuracy, so you need to have a good mix and balance between these. And, you know, accuracy can only be achieved through a lot of practice. Make sure, again, that you give yourself enough time to prepare before an interview. Thirdly, you always need to think about edge cases and explain your thought process very clearly. And finally, you need to practice problem solving quite efficiently. For example, instead of brute forcing a solution, you need to think how you can reduce its complexity, whether it's time or memory. Don't wait, essentially, for your interviewer to prompt you to write a more efficient solution. Suggest it yourself and implement that idea. My very last and definitely very overlooked tip that I have for you is not to underestimate the power of some online forums like Glassdoor or even Reddit. These are literally gold mines for insights into specific companies' interviews processes. For example, you might find some blog posts breaking down what type of questions are asked at a place like Goldman Sachs or Citadel. It's like having a cheat sheet for your application, you know? So you need to take some notes, put everything that you find online for a specific company in a Word document and just build upon that. Dare I say, this is literally like having a secret weapon for job hunts. And yeah, that is, in my opinion, how you land a quant internship or a graduate role. It's definitely a lot of work, it's not easy and not anyone can do it. But if you focus on the right areas, ads, coding, machine learning and finance, you'll be in great shape. If you found this video helpful, definitely let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos from me, whether they're about maths, quant roles, day in the lives or university advice. If you have more tips for our fellow wannabe quants, definitely drop them in the comments. I would love to hear from you to expand my arsenal as well. Yeah, don't forget to check out my Instagram if you want to see more of me. Definitely, I am a lot more active on there. And yeah, good luck with your quant job search and I really, really hope that I will see you in the next one. I'm sick of daydreaming I just want the feeling of you in my bed I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline Want you by my head